The idea here is to think about, like I was saying earlier, theater of the rhyme. But it's not necessarily about the grammar of the voice, but the grammar of the information being projected, or for, for that matter, being composed. So we're looking at database aesthetics as a collision between ancient and modern. Like I said before, the idea here is, see, for example, the phrase that I always kind of riff on with this is William Gibson's phrase, where he says, the future is already here, it's just unevenly distributed. So thinking about different notions of time, different notions of theater, and how people respond to the environments, you have to remember, for a couple thousand years ago, people sitting in this, some of the actor would have to project their voice, for example, they'd have to actually very specifically even speak to different directions of the audience to make sure people could hear it. Well, I bought in a couple megawatt speakers, <laughs> and uh, behind each of these screens you can see the speakers are almost as big as these arches, those are big bass woofers. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it was uh, kind of a hip-hop acropolis. Um, but the idea here is thinking about contemporary art as a collision, and that's what I'm kind of, kind of riffing in. And this is, again, to give you a little bit of scale, <laughs> right? All right. Um, John Cage, the reason I keep this piece, here you go. Right, John Cage, was one of the first composers to kind of think of how to create music with turntables. And in 1939, he did a piece called Imaginary Landscape, where essentially he walked into a concert hall and there was a whole bunch of turntables playing at different frequencies. People got pissed off, they were like, you know, what is going on? We paid money to come see a concert. Then the turntables would just play frequencies. And the name of the composition was Imaginary Landscape. And the funny thing is, if we, when you think about frequencies in this era, and the reason I kind of riff on this is because frequencies are the things that hold our networks together at this point. You can look at the wireless networks, the, the restaurants, for example. Uh, you can look at the satellite frequencies. All of those were, in a certain sense, pre-thought uh, pre out, in a way, by the artist. So the artist's imagination versus the technological environment we're living in. So multiple record players creating an environment of frequencies. Now, for us, it's just the satellite networks and that kind of thing. Uh, this is my studio. You know, notice there's no paint and there's no sculptural materials. And the funny thing is, is like when I was looking at Victor Bergman's film yesterday, I realized the amount of editing I do when I make a film or a track. Um, he's coming from a specific kind of I, the, the sheer slowness of the edits. Uh, for my imagination, comes far more from this idea of, of hyper overload, of taking all the different bits and pieces and kind of condensing them. Rather than yesterday, you would see the camera linger on someone's face for three minutes as they glance, and then an essay could be written about Lacanian gaze or something. Um, I'm going to play a clip that's a kind of an animation example of uh, some of this, just to give you an idea of some contemporary material. But I, before I do that, I just want to walk you guys through my hard drive here. <laughs> All right, and this is one of the lecture clips again. Uh, this is from some old friends of mine uh, named Emergency Broadcast Network. And the funny thing is that they did the videos for U2 Zoo TV tour uh, a couple years ago. And they, uh, they went to RISD, which is a you know, pretty good art school. And the funny thing is whenever I look at these older clips, this is like from 1994-95, I, I just feel like, wow, I can't believe you know, how much memory it used to take to make this. But they had to have whole bunch of sequencers and samplers just to hold the memory. Um, and the reason I was showing you guys my studio is that um, part of all of that is simply just memory. Um, just be able to kind of hold the, these are external hard drives for film clips. But when people, you know, at the end of the day when you're done with it, they don't really necessarily see the creative processes as memory. So let me play you this clip. And you have to remember, 1994 to now is just 10 years, but you can get the idea.